this is a slide of an articular hyaline cartilage guys the why i'm uh, stressing so much on this word articular here because a normal hyaline cartilage and articular hyaline cartilage will vary in few points like number 1 there is no perichondrium there is no perichondrium and that is because it is what it is articular if it is a hyaline cartilage present anywhere else like in the epiphyseal plate or anywhere else then you will have a uh, perichondrium one of the property of the hyaline cartilage is the presence of the perichondrium but not if it is present at the articular end and that's why the regeneration is very poor if you look at the articular uh, end hyaline cartilages and second important thing to note note here is this look at this basal part here this here is actually the calcified zone so that's a calcified cartilage zone here that is a calcified cartilage zone you can see that you can see a lot of blood vessels also in that region the bone will start actually after that so it's a calcified cartilage zone again representing it is the slide of a hyaline cartilage but which hyaline cartilage it's an articular hyaline cartilage which do not have perichondrium rest of the features are same like a typical hyaline cartilage like we have chondrocytes present in lacuna we got these chondrocytes present in the lacuna and you can see these are the isogenous cell nest which are which is another unique feature of the hyaline cartilage we call it isogenous cell nest or you can simply call it cell nest which usually made up of four to six chondrocytes clubbed together and that is a isogenous cell nest they form they have a darkly stained matrix present around them called as a territorial matrix and we do have a lightly zoned region present in between and that lightly if if i just let's say mark mark let me mark this area here this is called as a interterritorial matrix this is the interterritorial matrix and I, as you can see this basophilia this basophilic nature of this this basophilia of this interterritorial matrix is because of what it is because of the glycose aminoglycans the gags the presence of the glycose aminoglycans is the one which gives it a basophilic appearance uh, glycose aminoglycans like chondritin sulfate if i make like an example that is chondritin sulfate so in the hyaline cartilage we do have perichondrium but not here it is a articular hyaline cartilage no perichondrium is there we have a calcified zone present toward the basal part otherwise if it's a typical hyaline cartilage we have a perichondrium present on both the side if you take a hyaline cartilage of the trachea then you will see the perichondrium fibrous and a cellular layer of perichondrium present on both the side but not in here you have a calcified zone present on the other side we have a isogenous cell uh, nest present which are having four to six cells clubbed together the chondrocytes which are present in the lacuna we have a territorial matrix which is a region which is stained around these isogenous region like this is the territorial matrix here and then a lightly zoned the basophilic region that we have in the middle part in between those cell nest is called as a interterritorial matrix the features of the typical features of a the hyaline cartilage uh, just to tell you the collagen type here is a type 2 collagen fiber it's a type 2 collagen fiber that is appreciated in the hyaline cartilage predominantly we have type 2 collagen fiber in there Chale guys moving on to the next slide the next slide slide number 6 that we are looking at this is a slide of again a cartilage but this time what cartilage this is the fibro cartilage you are looking at this here is a slide of a fibro cartilage let me just give the example in the beginning only fibro cartilage like intervertebral disc uh like pubic symphysis menisci labrum you know all these are having the fibro cartilages what you see in the fibro cartilage different from the hyaline cartilages first of all there is no perichondrium guys there is no perichondrium i mean in the hyaline cartilage the exception was in the articular region but in the fibro cartilage there is no perichondrium at all okay another thing there is no cell nest on but what what is to be noticed here look at these parallel bundles these are the parallel bundles of collagen fibers now individual branch individual bun, uh, what do you say fiber will not branch there is a word which is used for the fibro cartilage and that is called as a bundle branching guys 
it's not the branching of a single fiber, but the bundle may branch. Like imagine if this is a bundle of collagen fiber running in there, then you might see that at certain point, the few fibers will run in this direction and the remaining fibers will run in other direction. So individual fiber is not branching, but there is a bundle branching taking place. 100 fibers are going 50 and 50, they might divide into that. So that is called as a bundle branching can be seen. And this is so predominantly, uh, we have these collagen fibers present so predominantly in the fibrocartilage that the chondrocytes which are present here are actually squeezed in between them. And when these chondrocytes are squeezed in between them, they arrange in a line. Look at that. If you see this linear arrangement, that's a linear arrangement of chondrocytes. Again, chondrocytes present in lacuna only, but these chondrocytes are al aligned. They are having a linear arrangement and why is it so? Because of the heavy collagen, collagen bundle fibers which are present in there and they make these chondro uh, chondrocytes squeeze and get arranged into the line, which is not seen in the elastic or hyaline cartilage, but it is a typical feature of the fibro cartilage. It's a typical feature of the fibro cartilage. The slide of fibro cartilage is very, very commonly confused with the slide of tendon. Because tendons are also having the collagen fibers, having a parallel bundle of collagen fiber showing the bundle branching. The only thing is when you look into the lower resolution, like say 10x or something, then you may not be able to see the chondrocytes. If in the 10x you are not able to see the chondrocytes, that means you are only looking at the collagen fiber, then you might say it is a slide of a fiber, uh, what do you say, tendon. But I am pretty sure that if they have to ask you a question on the fibro cartilage itself, they definitely will give the slide at least on 40x or above so that you can actually appreciate the chondrocytes present inside, right? Chale guys, moving on to the next one. The slide, next slide here we have is a slide number 7 and that is a slide of the elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage, again we do have pericondrium there. Now this is the pericondrium, we have a cellular layer as well as a fibrous layer. So pericondrium is present, let me write that, that is a slide of the elastic cartilage. Same story, again the chondrocytes in the lacuna. But what you see here guys, chondrocytes are neither arranged as a cell nest, nor they are present in having any linear arrangement. So neither they are clubbed together. You may see one or two chondrocytes clubbing together in the elastic also, but unlike a typical hyaline cartilage where we have cell nest, we do not have cell nest here, number one. Number two, they are neither arranged in the line because we do not have collagen fibers here. In fact, we have an elastin fiber in this. But elastin fiber cannot be seen here, right? This is a H&E staining. For the elastin fiber, we need argentafin staining or any, any particular stain which, will, uh, which is taken up by the elastic fibers. Now, if I just draw, let's say if you're looking at a slide of a elastic fibers stained in the argentafin stain or something, then you will see elastic fibers something like this. And then you will see individual fiber is actually branching. I'm just drawing one fiber only for you, like this. Unlike collagen fibers, where a bundle is branching here, individual fiber can branch, although it cannot be seen in the h &E staining. So let us say this here is an elastin fiber. If seen in the silver stain, you will see it in a black color only and they will be seen something like this that they will show the branching of an individual fiber at both the ends. And these elastin fiber can be seen, uh, 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 can be seen more uh, dense toward the inner aspect. I mean, if this is a periphery here, if this is a peripheral part and this is the central part, we're going toward the central part. So we have more elastin fiber toward the central part here. We have more number of elastin fiber and we have less elastin fiber at the peripheral part. So you can actually identify the elastic cartilage based on this just a differentiating feature from the hyaline and the, the fibro cartilage itself. Well, just to quote some examples here, obviously the example here would be the, the auricle, uh, epiglottis, eustachian tube, this is auditory tube. So these are some examples of the elastic cartilages. In a general histology, the question actually is, is all about identifying the thing, that, that's, that's all it is. They, they, they might, uh, the, the most commonly or the most expected question from the general histology is, they will just put up a slide for you. I will write that which of the following feature is true or false for the given slide. So if you know the given slide, then you can know, then you can easily mark out that what are the features for that. So identification is the point here. 